So for those of you that have been following my channel for a while, you probably noticed that I've been using a Ford Transit vehicle for my mountain biking excursions. So I thought I'd do a quick walkabout, show you where I am with my van build, which I've been doing in sequence for about 18 months now. Stages along the way where I build a little bit, see how it works, refine it, fine tune, take it apart and do it again. Um, and then build the next step and then the next step and so on. So I'm nearly done. So I thought I'd do a quick walk about today. So let's go start at the garage. And for those of you that are interested, I will also include a parts list of the key components that I use in my van build in the description of the video down below. And also along the way, I've recorded videos of each stage of my van build. So for those of you that might be interested in how I did things and the lessons learned, you might want to stay tuned over the next couple of months as I edit and release these how-to videos. So the design of the van build is primarily to facilitate my mountain biking excursions. And so I built the, the garage pretty high so it accommodates the full height of the van. And I have a bike drawer here that's on 300 pound uh, bike slides or drawer slides. And the drawer folds right out like that. And you can see that you take the front wheels off and you anchor the forks down here on these clamps that work great. I've got two boxes to store my bike wheels and they're custom fit to fit a 27 and a half and a 29 inch wheel. I have some storage on this side of the van where I have my tents and sleeping bags and camping chairs and so on here. I have a second drawer here, again on 300 pound drawer slides, where I have a, an equipment box that has all my electrical wires and cables and so on, and some plumbing to um, resupply my 24 gallon water tank over there. So I have the hosing and so on. And the cool thing about the water system is I also have this, um, this cabled connector that hooks right on here. Just right there. Okay. And so this provides a bike show where I can hose off my bike or a backdoor shower in a pinch and so I can just shower myself off when I need to and it works great by the way and so there's also a box here that adds extra capacity a box about the same size and an extra food box and above here is the so are the solar panels you can see fold up like a suitcase there's a nice handle on them and clips and it just folds right out so there's three of them for a total of 360 watts of solar capacity but the idea is that I'm only going to use them in a pinch um, so we got extra storage here for sleeping bags and other miscellaneous things like our laundry and things like that on the back doors I have the magnetic window shades that work great they seal real tight so no light gets in and no light from the outside gets out at night so they work great. This is the most amazing thing and, in the whole van. And so we've also got a rear door. <laughs> pocket you storage. Po pocket storage. Pocket storage for our helmet, our bike shoes, and uh, some other miscellaneous pads and things like that. So let's go around the lobby and have a look there. So here's the kitchen. I have a fold down countertop covering the kitchen sink. Um, pretty decent size capacity. Underneath, I have my gray water. It's just simply a jerry can, 25 gallon jerry can on a quick garden hose, quick release. So you can simply remove it like that. Beside it, I have a garbage can and below it, a box for uh, recyclables, garbage, um, beer cans and recyclables and so on. And a switch on my water pump so that it, so that the water pump doesn't can continue to cycle when I'm not pressurizing the system. So above the sink I have a 
cabinet that we can store our toiletries and uh, kitchen soap and things like that. Okay, so my lights are switched on this dimmer panel on the left. I have the overhead lights that come on. And on the right one, I have the reading lights over here. Like that. And I find they're a little bright at night, so we can dim them off of this switch. I have the max fan up here that's on a variable motor is I think at 10 different speeds or so on so this is a great fan that really vents everything out here. I have a cover that we can put on that so it provides insulation on chilly nights. Um, I have two and a half inch cutouts in each wall that extends the length of the sleeping room by about five inches so that's really valuable it's about a full six feet wide now um, wall to wall it's a bit of a pain to create those cutouts but in my opinion it was definitely worth doing I've got some lights on the this upper cabinets here I have a light switch here and I have what I call my Murphy snow that's on this little fold down compartment it's a camping stove on a propane system and it works great. You just open it up, put in a one pound um, propane tank and you're away. That's what this is for, to turn the fan on, fully draft the fumes from the propane tank. But it operates real simple. This is to prevent some of the rattling of the metal on the wall. Folds right back up, real simple, latch it on, done. On this side, I have my fridge. I think it's 3.8 cubic feet. Plenty of capacity for about four days worth of groceries and a six to 12 pack of beer, depending on how you wanna um, utilize your storage. I have the bunch of drawers here on this side, on nice sides with magnets to keep them cinched in tight. You can hear it go click when you close them. They're even in fact hard to open because they're cinched in nicely, nice and tight. My utensil drawer, my utility drawer, and the porta potty that's on a latch. You see the latch here that holds it closed. And it's a Thetford cassette toilet where there's a water tank below and a pump, uh, the pump that pushes water around the bowl to flush it down into the lower compartment. It works great. The slide, this slide is on a 300 pound slide so you can, you can actually sit on it um, and it supports your weight. The upper cabinets also have latches, but I find that these struts actually have a closing, tight closing feature. So you probably don't need the latches like I put on them, but I was leery of things falling out under, under while you're driving on the highway. Um, we use them for a his and hers clothing compartment, and then the one over here is for groceries and cereal boxes and the like. So they work great and they cinch down nice and tight, like I said. Another outlet for the AC power that comes off the battery. The battery does have a 2000 watt inverter embedded in it. We have this very cool cubby hole compartment that's the near end of where I store my solar panels. And it's the perfect length for these window shades. This is the front window and the two, the driver side and passenger side, side windows that work just like the magnetized window shades on the, on the rear doors and we also have them on the side door. Again, you can see how nice and tight they cinch on the doors. So that works great. Then we have this battery storage area where this is my Blue Eddy AC200P 
2000 watt hour, 2000 watt inverter power pack. And it's connected to the fuse box here that drives all my different loads on 15 amp fuses off of this one load point. And so the Bluetti power pack is currently being powered off the 12 volt auxiliary jack that I had installed at the back here. So this is what this cord is for. And it plugs right into, so you can see that right back in there, there's a 12 volt auxiliary jack that I had the manufacturer install in here. And so the uh, auxiliary jack plugs right into it. But unfortunately, it only powers my battery at a rate of 100 watts. And so it takes a full 20 hours to fully recharge from zero all the way to 100%. So it's way too slow, and so I'm looking at other solutions, but that'll be the subject of a future video. The cool thing about this configuration is we have to open this door to be able to turn on and turn off the battery, but also to read the instrument panel as to the rate of charge. So while you've got the door open, it also, with this fold down configuration and the two hinges, very strong sturdy hinges with three quarter inch plywood, it provides a step up to the bed, which is higher than you'd really like, but it's high because it needs to accommodate the mountain bikes. So this step is very convenient. It folds, it folds up right up like that. So we also have the bug screens that are zipped, that are sealed inside the sealant on the enclosure of the side door. And they're on a clips that fold right down like that. And they zip down, so they're tight on the side. And they're also magnetized between the two of them. So you can see that they cinch together here, nice and tight and close behind you. All the way down. So you see when you, you walk out, they open, then they cinch nice and closed. The other cool thing is the swivel seats. So I got one of them turned around and how convenient it is to simply back into a campsite, swivel the seats around, open the fridge, crack a beer, and enjoy the view at the side of the van. It's a very cool place that we like to hang out and have our appetizers. Um, unless, of course, it's nice outside. But if it's rainy or something like this, this is a very comfy, convenient thing. These are Ford, the original OEM Ford swivel seats. Probably I would have upgraded them to custom seats because what I find is the lumbar support is a little odd and I get back fatigue on long drives on the driver's seat. So. Whether you want to go with the Ford versions or not, it's kind of up to you. I probably would recommend getting the aftermarket ones that are that have better lumbar support. So the other things are we have a portable table that's hinged on a bungee here, but it folds right into the onto the wall, nicely under the countertop. It's secure; it doesn't rattle or anything, and you just slide it out, fold it out. And here's your appetizer table while you sit here and lounge in the in the cabin. The other thing is the step down. I'm probably going to finally, in a in a future video, I'm going to ha have the uh, step up on the side door. But temporarily, we have a step that we use outside to get into the van, in and out. But also sometimes in the van, if you've got another party. You got two or three or four people in here. It works as a nice convenient little seat inside the van. So even if I get the outdoor step up, I'm probably going to keep this because of how flexible and convenient it is. It's also a great camp stool if you're sitting around a campfire. And when we do laundry, we also have these hooks that I put in here on the cabinets as well as on the opposite wall over here so that we can string up some 
cords between the hangers and string out our laundry and air dry them inside the van. It seems to work pretty well. So the van is nearly done, but not completely done. I still have some trim to put in around the, around the gap between the roof and the side panels. Um, normally we'd have our bed mattress in here, which is a four inch memory foam that I got from a manufacturer of a fold out, fold out uh, couch bed. And so it's very pliable, it's light, um, and it comes fully covered, so it keeps the dirt off the foam and stuff and so on. So that's what we end up sleeping on, and it perfectly fits inside this bed enclosure. And so one caveat that I would add to this video is that I'm just a regular guy. I don't have any trade skills in carpentry or plumbing or electrical. And I've learned a lot by looking at others' YouTube videos of how to do that. But I've also learned that many of those YouTube videos gave me bad advice. And so I've kind of had to painstakingly troubleshoot my own problems that were unique to this particular van build. But the YouTube is an incredible resource. And anyone just like me can virtually build their own van if they so choose. At this stage, I think the incremental cost above the cost of the van was about $20,000 Canadian for all the materials, all the electrical, all the plumbing, and so on. Um, and then my own labor that probably is anywhere between three to six months all in that I did weekend and weekend at a time in small segments. And I probably ended up spending two to three times more because I didn't know what I didn't know. And now if I was to redo the van build, it would be probably a third of the time that it, that it took to build it to get to this stage. So that's a quick overview of my van build that's nearly complete. And I don't know if it's ever going to be com fully complete and because I continue to tweak and tune along the way. But right now it's pretty great and I can't wait to go to our next road trip that's going to be into California and Arizona. So thanks for watching folks and we'll see you next time.